These trucks were built at the Minsk automobile plant. They impressed with their power, endurance, and load capacity. While some of them served in the national economy, others, carrying deadly cargo on their backs, could spread destruction and chaos. Drivers called them hurricanes, but in reality, they were harbingers of the apocalypse or doomsday trucks. The prehistory of their appearance began at the Tyuratum Research and Testing Range. It was from there, on October 4th, 1957, that the Soviet satellite PS-1 was launched into space with the help of the R-7 rocket, becoming the first artificial satellite of Earth. This very event marked the beginning of the space age and the start of the space race between the two world powers, the USSR and the USA. From then on, the space race only gained momentum. Large, multi-stage ballistic missiles were developed, which not only sent the first humans into Earth's orbit, but also became a new and diverse means of delivering powerful nuclear warheads. These ballistic missiles were classified as intercontinental and could deliver a nuclear warhead with a yield of several megatons to the other side of the planet in just a matter of minutes. Such missile weapons were classified as strategic and served mainly as a deterrent. Giant cosmodromes and silo installations were built to launch them. While multistage intercontinental missiles could reach speeds of over 6 kilometers per second in the sky, transporting these giants, each weighing over 100 tons, on land required special multi-axle, all-wheel drive ballast, and tractor trucks, which were built at the Minsk automobile plant in the second half of the 1950s. The MAZ-535, and later the MAZ-537. The purpose of these vehicles was to transport strategic missiles from maintenance sites to the launch pads at cosmodromes. For this, specialized low-frame multi-axle trailers were used. The missile program of the Minsk Union was not limited to the construction of strategic ballistic missiles, but also included the development of a wide range of operational tactical missile systems of short and medium range. Most of these systems were mobile and were based on wheeled or tracked chassis. It was specifically for such a medium range missile, the R-17, that the 9P-117 launcher was created, which was based on the MAZ-543 wheeled chassis. This chassis replaced the track 2P-19 platform, on which the R-17 missile had been based since 1959, from the moment its development was completed. However, the track chassis had insufficient driving performance. It lacked mobility, especially on paved roads. That's why, alongside the track chassis, R-17 missile launchers were also mounted on the four-axle wheeled chassis of MAZ-537 trucks. But during intensive field tests and training launches, this vehicle could not withstand the loads and was not adopted into service. It was necessary to look for some alternative, but there simply wasn't one. After all, at that time, the most powerful wheeled chassis was the MAZ-537. That's why the designers at the MAZ Special Design Bureau had to go back to the drawing board and develop a new chassis that, in terms of layout and technical specifications, would be better suited for carrying out such specialized tasks. Already in 1962, six experimental prototypes of the four-axle chassis were built, which received the name MAZ-543. The MAZ-537 model served as the component base for this vehicle. From it, the new chassis inherited a 12-cylinder V-shaped diesel engine D12, a 525A with a displacement of 38.8 liters and a power output of 525 horsepower, as well as a 3-speed planetary gearbox with a locked torque converter. In addition, the vehicle was also equipped with a 2-speed transfer case with a locked interaxle differential and a centralized tire inflation system. Unlike the MAZ-537, the new chassis had not just one, but two cabins, which were positioned far ahead of the front axle and placed separately from each other on both sides of the engine compartment. This split cabin design was chosen specifically to allow for the installation of missile systems on the truck chassis, since the free space between the cabins conveniently accommodated the missile launcher. To become a true missile carrier, the new MAZ received an extended wheelbase of 7 meters 70 centimeters and increased overall dimensions. While the 537 chassis model didn't even reach 9 meters in length, the new MAZ stretched to 11 meters 65 centimeters long, with a width of 3 meters 5 centimeters and a height of 2 meters 67 centimeters. The truck's curb weight is 23 tons, with a maximum payload capacity of 19 tons 100 kilograms. On highways, the 543 could reach a top speed of 60 kilometers per hour, and on dirt roads, 30 kilometers per hour. For every 100 kilometers on the highway, it consumed 80 liters of fuel, which was stored in two main tanks of 260 liters each and a reserve tank of 180 liters. The official debut of the MAZ-543 took place on November 7, 1965, at the parade in Moscow. 
when a battery of 9K72 Elbrus missile systems, better known in the West by the NATO codename SCUD, drove across Red Square, a single stage R-17 ballistic missile was mounted on the high mobility chassis. Besides the SCUD, the 543 model also became the main chassis for another operational tactical missile system, the Tempest, which included a two-stage ballistic missile with a range of 900 kilometers. This missile system began to enter service with the Soviet Army in 1966. In 1967, the upgraded MAZ-543A went into production, featuring significant changes in the layout of the engine compartment, which made it possible to enlarge the chassis mounting platform for the missile system's combat control equipment. The payload capacity of this modification increased to 22 tons. A number of specialized vehicles were created on its basis, including the 9K58 Smirch multiple launch rocket system. In the mid-1970s, the specialized KS5571 crane was also mounted on this chassis. A further development of the Minsk chassis was the 543M modification, which was created specifically to accommodate the launcher of the S-300 surface-to-air missile system. This vehicle received significant reconfiguration of its front section. The right cab was removed, and the remaining left cab was extended as far forward as possible beyond the front axle. The placement of the fuel tanks and radiators was also changed. All of this made it possible to maximize the mounting length of the frame. The first experimental batch of the modernized chassis was delivered to the Army in 1973. In fact, besides the S-300 anti-aircraft missile systems, the modernized chassis was also used to mount the Rubesh coastal missile system. Overall, the 543 chassis was impressive in its versatility. Superstructures of any type were built on the basis of this vehicle. Mobile command posts, radar stations, even field hotels for soldiers. A large number of these vehicles were exported to the armies of the Eastern Bloc countries. In the GDR, repair and recovery modules were built on the basis of the 543 chassis. A body covered with a tarp was mounted on the vehicle, used to transport the necessary equipment and specialists. This protected them from bad weather conditions. The Minsk truck proved useful not only in the military, but also in civilian economic life. Its high off-road capability, load capacity, and endurance were especially useful during the active development of the West Siberian oil and gas region, which began in the early 1970s. Special modifications of the 543 chassis were created specifically for work in the challenging off-road conditions of Siberia. In 1972, the plant produced experimental models of the MAZ-731-201 pipe carrier for transporting pipes with a total length of 36 meters, as well as the MAZ-79-10 pipe transporter and the MAZ-75-10 dump truck. The load capacity of the latter two vehicles was 20 tons. The update also affected the four-axle civilian flatbed truck tractor MAZ-543P, which had been in production since 1966. This followed a decree by the USSR government, according to which the plant in Minsk was required to supply between 5 and 10 percent of its production annually for the civilian national economy. In 1972, this vehicle received a new designation, MAZ-7310. Under this name, the model was produced in series starting from 1976. It had a payload capacity of 19 tons and could operate in tandem with a trailer capable of carrying 18 tons. In the national economy, MAZ-7310 family vehicles, as well as all their derivative modifications, were primarily intended for transporting oversized indivisible cargo to remote regions of the USSR with harsh climates. Transport companies installed additional fuel tanks with a capacity of 1,220 liters on these vehicles, which provided a record-breaking range of 1,500 kilometers. This allowed the trucks to cover vast stretches of road even in the complete absence of fueling stations and repair shops. Structurally, the civilian versions differed little from the military ones, except perhaps for the absence of shielded electrical wiring and blackout lighting, devices, communication equipment, and other military features. The main external difference between the two types of trucks was in their color schemes. The civilian versions were painted in bright, orange-red colors. The 7310 chassis was also used to create AA-60 airfield fire trucks, which had a separate ZIL-375 engine with 180 horsepower that powered the pump. Based on this vehicle, a small series of AA-70 combined firefighting trucks was produced, which, in addition to a water tank and foam generator, also had a compartment for fire extinguishing powder, located across the vehicle right behind the engine. In addition, the vehicle was equipped with an extra monitor nozzle for dispensing powder. Also, based on the 7310 chassis, a single unit was produced in 1979. An experimental airfield fire and rescue vehicle, the APS-70, was produced, equipped with a special ramp for evacuating passengers from a crashed aircraft. 
At the beginning of the 1980s, a new modernization program was implemented at the Minsk automobile plant, which resulted in the creation of a new family of four-axle chassis called Oplot, based on the 543 model. The new vehicles were equipped with Barnwell-made turbocharged diesel engines, whose power increased to 650 horsepower. This power unit was paired with a new hydromechanical transmission, now not with three, but with four ranges, featuring a disc friction clutch for the torque converter lockup mechanism. The new chassis model also received a single-stage transfer case, which replaced the two-stage one that had been installed on all previous MAZ chassis. Thanks to additional cross-members, the vehicle received a reinforced frame. The upgraded model was also equipped with new wide-profile tires with an increased maximum load capacity. The new, more powerful engine and four-speed gearbox allowed the upgraded chassis to reach a maximum speed of 65 km per hour. The basic four-axle chassis, whose maximum payload capacity was increased to 20 tons, was designated as the MAZ-7911. The version of the vehicle with a single left-side cab was named MAZ-79111. The chassis family of the Oplot also included the short wheelbase ballast tractor MAZ-7311, which was designed for towing trailers with a maximum weight of 75 tons, or aircraft with a total takeoff weight of 200 tons. The truck was equipped with a cargo platform with a lifting capacity of 16 tons and an additional two-seat cab for the crew operating the towed equipment. This program was completed by the experimental short wheelbase airfield tractor MAZ-73132 with a shortened all-metal cargo platform and the 23-ton timber truck MAZ-73136 with a two-axle trailer. For their high power and good off-road capability, these trucks earned the nickname Hurricane among drivers. But despite their impressive technical specifications, they turned out to be too complex. They were expensive to operate, which is why they never gained much popularity in the regular national economy. Their production in small batches continued until 1991. About 2,000 four-axle civilian truck chassis were built during this time. As for the military chassis, their production is still ongoing at the Minsk wheel tractor plant. The four-axle missile carrier chassis from the Minsk automobile plant were just a trial run. The true masterpieces of automotive gigantism from the missile era were built in the early 1980s, when the USSR began developing its own ground-based mobile missile system, not just of the operational tactical level, but of the strategic level, equipped with full-fledged intercontinental ballistic missiles. This was a response to the American attempt to build a similar mobile ground-based strategic missile system. The development of mobile launch platforms for intercontinental missiles based on wheeled tractors accelerated significantly in the United States in the early 1970s, when the American government tasked designers with developing a specialized wheeled chassis for transporting the Advanced Solid Fuel Intercontinental Ballistic Missile MX, which was developed by the Martin Company. These missiles were to be deployed on mobile ground-based platforms. Their development was handled by Boeing Aerospace. Structurally, it was a long supporting frame on which the missile container was mounted, and this container could be raised and lowered using two hydraulic cylinders. On both sides, the frame was equipped with retractable supports. The development of the wheeled chassis was handled by Terex Corporation, a well-known American automotive company recognized as an authority in the construction of mining dump trucks and various types of specialized equipment. The first vehicle was completed in 1979. It was equipped with a Detroit Diesel 16V92 TA engine with a power output of 1,000 horsepower. The tractor had four axles. Dual wheels were installed on the two rear axles. The rocket launcher, together with the trucks, reached truly gigantic dimensions. The length was over 50 meters, the width 6 meters 60 centimeters, the height 9 meters, and the weight reached an estimated 658 tons. The entire complex was named the Transporter Emplacer, and in 1980 it underwent field tests near Lviv, which ended quite satisfactorily, despite the decent qualities of the missile system. It was never adopted by the U.S. Army. In 1981, work on this project was discontinued. President Ronald Reagan preferred the silo-based deployment of MX Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles. The two giant Terex tractors were sold at auction, and in the mid-90s they were scrapped for metal. It was this American attempt that inspired the USSR to create something similar. Since the mid-1950s, the Center for the Construction and Development of Multi-Wheeled Truck Chassis was the Special Design Bureau of the Minsk Automobile Plant, MAZ, which already had experience in designing four-axle trucks with increased cross-country ability and load capacity. And this time as well, the government and the highest military leadership of the USSR entrusted the people of Minsk with this challenging and responsible mission, which became one of the largest projects of the Minsk Automobile Plant, known as the MAZ-7904-4. The development of this vehicle began in the early 1980s in Minsk and took place under strict secrecy. The gigantic chassis was intended to serve as a carrier and launch platform for an intercontinental ballistic missile. 
By June 1983, the first vehicle had already been built. At the core of the chassis was a strong, welded load-bearing frame. Two symmetrical all-metal cabins were attached to the sides of its front section. The six-axle MAZ7904 was equipped with two diesel engines, a main engine with 1,500 horsepower and an auxiliary engine with 330 horsepower, which powered the vehicle's auxiliary systems. The chassis had full 12x12 all-wheel drive and was equipped with 12 single Bridgestone wheels, each over 3 meters in diameter, which were purchased in Japan. The 7904 had an impressive size. It was 32 meters long, 6 meters and 80 centimeters wide, and 3 meters 45 centimeters high. The chassis weighed 140 tons, with a payload capacity of 220 tons. Fully loaded, the vehicle could reach a maximum speed of 27 kilometers per hour. After factory testing, the chassis was disassembled and delivered to the Baikonur Cosmodrome in January 1984, where the second stage of testing took place. As a load for the chassis, an RT-23 ballistic missile, developed by the Yasnoi Design Bureau, was installed on board. During the tests, significant shortcomings of the vehicle were revealed, low off-road capability with a load and insufficient maneuverability. Further work on the chassis was halted. The only prototype built was abandoned in one of the hangars at Baikonur, and in 2010 it was scrapped. In 1983, the SKB released another development of a multi-wheeled chassis, the MAZ-7906, under the name Salina II. This truck had eight axles and was intended for transporting and launching the RT-23 UTTH Maladets Intercontinental Solid Fuel Ballistic Missile. In parallel with the MAZ-7906, a 12-axle chassis, the MAZ-7907, was created. It was equipped with a gas turbine tank engine with a power output of 1,250 horsepower. The engine powered an alternating current generator, which in turn supplied electricity to 24 electric motors installed inside the frame, one on each wheel. The MAZ-7907 had a weight of 65 tons, 800 kilograms, and a payload capacity of 150 tons. Despite its advanced design and decent technical specifications, the MAZ-7907 was never adopted for service. The Soviet leadership preferred to deploy ballistic missiles on railway mobile launch platforms, which traveled along the railways of the USSR disguised as ordinary freight and passenger trains.